Globally, DMEC is becoming the most popular choice for treating corneal endothelial disorders surgically. But here in the United States, still for some of the more difficult, complicated operations, you have some cornea specialists, even very good doctors, still doing the older version of the operation, DSEC instead. And one of the most common complicated situations in which you may do the older operation is if the patient's had a prior penetrating keratoplasty, a PK or a PKP. And that's because there is this belief that the operation DMEC is more challenging and difficult and fraught in these eyes. But that is largely a myth. And in fact, DMEC is usually easier in an eye that's had a previous PK than it is in a normal eye. An eye being operated on, for example, a Fuchs dystrophy. As long as you know a few little techniques and tricks to make the operation simpler. This is an eye that we operated on just in our office last week. And I want to show you the full unedited video to reveal the tricks to make the operation simpler. The first thing you'll notice is we're making paracentesis and they're made not at the corneal limbus, but rather a half a millimeter or even a millimeter posterior to the limbus in the sclera. And the reason I'm making those incisions and the main wound you'll notice in the sclera rather than in the cornea is because in eyes that have previously had a PK, the cornea incisions tend to leak when you make them in the thinned recipient periphery. So your wounds are more likely to be watertight and airtight if you make them in the sclera. The, the knives that I like to use for these cases are super sharp. The best ones are made by Manny, but we also use knives made by BVI, and they're much sharper than the typical Alcon blade, and those are a pleasure to work with. They make the operation much more enjoyable for me. I'm using an inverted Sinsky hook in this operation, and the inverted Sinsky hook is suboptimally sized for this case. It's just this little nubbin of a thing. I like typically to use a longer hook, which gives me better traction when engaging the posterior cornea. And when I'm stripping around, you'll notice I'm not digging into the interface because I don't want to rip or dehiss the PK graft from behind. So I'm carefully maneuvering the Sinsky hook just inside the interface, and I've got an edge, and now I'm picking and peeling at it. And this is preferentially done under air. And the reason it's best to do this under air as opposed to viscoelastic or balanced salt solution is because you can see so much more clearly what you're doing when you're stripping under air because you have this air endothelial reflex. That's one of Garrett Mellis' great discoveries is that you can see the back of the cornea better and in more high definition when you have air in the anterior chamber. And that's particularly important when the back surface of the cornea is irregular as it is when you have a prior penetrating graft. So that's a very important component. Now, some people don't like stripping under air because the anterior chamber, they feel is less stable under these conditions. That's why I use an anterior chamber maintainer. This is a 23 gauge anterior chamber maintainer, which is connected to a 60 cc syringe that my assistant is holding. And he is depressing the plunger on that syringe and that fills the anterior chamber with air as I lose a bit during the normal stripping process. And that does not require some big expensive machine like an air uh, pump from a vitrectomy machine. It's a very easy, convenient, low cost way to strip to uh, strip under air. Now, interestingly, you'll notice that the endothelium and decimase membrane complex in an eye that's previously had a PK is fibrotic. So it doesn't tend to come apart in these little tattered shreds like a can in an eye with Fuchs dystrophy. But peculiarly, it is not thickened, it's thinned. So it's thin, but typically fibrotic and easy to remove as a single sheet. And you'll notice here I'm stripping it in bulk from the main wound. And even when using a main wound, it's easy to keep the anterior chamber filled with air as long as you have an AC maintainer. Now we're lucky in this case because sometimes when you place an AC maintainer through what is basically a scleral incision, 
you get ballooning of the conjunctiva with air. And if that occurs, it can be annoying and obnoxious. You have this fluttering air underneath the conjunctiva. And when that occurs, you just make a little incision in the conjunctiva and that allows the air to be released. Now, what I always do in these eyes that have had a previous PK is after I strip with the inverted Cincy hook, I go back around with these coaxial, in this case, MST forceps, and I feel around the interface of the previous penetrating graft. And I'm feeling around for little shreds or tags of Decimase membrane that I may have missed. Because remember, I'm not stripping all the way out to the bitter end of that interface because I don't want to dig into the interface and dehiss the graft from inside. So normally, there is this little remnant edge of unstripped Decimase membrane immediately adjacent to the interface. And that's not easy to see. I used to try to stain it by injecting tripan blue into the anterior chamber. And I quit doing that because then it would stain the stroma, it would stain the iris, and it made subsequent visualization more difficult during the operation. So I quit using tripan blue to stain. But instead what I do is I just carefully feel around with these forceps and I'm just testing and trying these irregular edges. And and what I find as I pull a little bit, if there's no give, that's the stroma of either the graft or the recipient rim. But often you can find a little pull, a little give, and that is tattered remnant of Decimase membrane, which you should carefully remove because it is liable to precipitate a detachment. The people who don't do DMEC and eyes with previous PK who get detachments the reason you're getting a detachment is because you have these edges of Decimase membrane which are unstripped that are interacting with the graft, or it's because you're using a graft that is overlapping the recipient rims. So that's very important. You use a smaller diameter graft. Now that I've stripped, what I'm doing is I'm injecting preservative-free lidocaine into the anterior chamber because it's been a few minutes since the start of the case. And what I'll do now is potentially the most uncomfortable part of the procedure. It's make a peripheral iridotomy. So now the AC maintainer is connected to a different syringe that has balanced salt solution. So the AC is being maintained with saline. And this is the Ertley capsularexis handpiece. And I'm using it to make a far peripheral iridotomy. You'll notice that it's kind of tough to see the iridotomy because you have have this opaque edge of the PK. And so in this case, I go all the way out as far distal as I can, and I can't really see the patency of the PI. So just for safety's sake, I'll make a second. And that's very common. If I can't quite see the PI that I'm making, if it's obscured by some detail, I'll just make a second one because it's quick and easy. I like the Ertley Capsularexis handpiece for that purpose because it cauterizes a hole in the far peripheral iris. There's usually very little, if any, bleeding. It's one hand it's facile, it's easy to do. Now you'll notice the pupil is a bit dilated here because of the subtenons block that we administered. If this were larger, I would give myostat or myocall to bring the pupil down before injecting the graft just to make unfolding a little bit simpler. In these eyes in which you're doing a DMEC under a PK, the trick is you have to use a smaller graft diameter than the recipient PK diameter so you don't overlap the interface or you'll get a detachment. So you're using a small diameter graft. In this case, this is a 7.25 millimeter graft. And in my own personal experience, you need to use a loose roll because since you don't have a big roll, there's not as much compression and pinning. So you need to use a loose roll from a donor 70 years or older so it's easier to unfold. Specifically, when you're doing DMEC and I with a PK, I find that centration can be the most difficult thing. So that's what I focus on the most, is making sure the graft is properly centered. Here the graft is well centered, and I'm testing to see whether it's right side up. It looks upside down, so I'm just flipping it through a paracentesis. There it is centered in the eye. It 
appears to be a double roll. I'm checking the Mosura sign and it's positive. So the graft is right side up. And then I burp the main wound, which lets fluid out of the eye. It compresses the anterior chamber and that gives me the pinning that I need to unfold the graft. Now with just a couple of Dirazomer taps on the surface of the cornea, I can unfold this lingering edge. And normally, what I do after I have the graft unfold in this position is I'm quick to lift it with an air bubble because centration is the most important thing. That's the key thing. That's the thing that I always pay attention to because the graft is not properly centered. Then it will overlap the recipient uh, rim uh, or the recipient uh, interface and you'll get a detachment. So here we are at the conclusion of the case. This is the end of the operation. The surgery has taken eight minutes so far to do a DMAC on the back of this patient's previous PK. And the reason I show this case is because this is so very typical. We have so many patients. We operate on multiple people a week, every week in our office-based operating environment who have a previous failed DMAC, or excuse me, a previous failed PK. And in such a situation where they, the patient has had basically an antiquated old operation that we hate to do anymore, you hate to add insult to injury by compounding that problem and giving them a second old antiquated operation that we don't do anymore. You would hate to put a DSEC on the back of a PK. So in my own experience, a DMEC is a better operation for the patient. It gives them better quality vision. It's quicker for me to do a DMEC than it is to do a DSEC these days and uh, it's more fun. So if you're holding out, if you're not doing DMAC on these eyes yet because you feel like they're too technically challenging or the grafts don't attach as well, that's not the case. The operations are as quick and as easy as DMEC for any other indications. I usually find that the attachment is better than it is in eyes with just straightforward Fuchs dystrophy. Eyes operated for bullous keratopathy tend to have a faster visual recovery with a lower risk of detachment. So long as you're using a smaller graft that doesn't overlap the PK interface, and you are stripping carefully under air to make sure you don't leave any remnants behind. So if you haven't started doing DMAC for these indications yet, you might think about it using these tips.